Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Kefnet Brawl deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and I set out to build a mono blue Brawl deck without a single counterspell in it, which is quite a challenge since counterspells are typically the main strength that blue has to offer. So instead we're building around our commander, Kefnet the Mindful, a 3 mana 5-5 five five legendary creature god with flying and indestructible, so that sounds amazing, but there's a pretty severe drawback. Kefnet cannot attack or block unless we have 7 or more cards in hand, which is a pretty difficult requirement to meet, but in order to get there almost every single non-land card in the deck will either draw a card or replace itself in some way, maybe by searching up a land. That way we keep our hand fully stocked so Kefnet can always attack. Blocking is going to be a bit trickier since we do still want to play out a land for the turn, so we will often drop down to 6 cards in hand during the opponent's turn, but since players start out at 25 life in Brawl, it's only going to take 5 attacks from Kefnet to win the game, so we usually want to turn it sideways. And then if we ever run low on cards in hand, we can always use the activated ability for 4 mana to draw a card, and then we may return a land we control to its owner's hand, so that's one way to potentially pick up 2 cards at once. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got Aether Spellbomb, which we can sacrifice to draw a card, or in a pinch we can sacrifice it to bounce a creature, so in the later turns, once we start drawing additional cards with Kefnet, we can maybe bounce an opposing creature and still have 7 cards in hand. Then we've got Brainstorm, which lets us draw 3 and put 2 cards back, so it's card neutral, but just gives us a nice bit of card selection, especially combined with our various shuffle effects, so we can potentially shuffle away cards we don't need. Then we have both Curiosity and Curious Obsession, which let us draw cards when our creature connects, so perfect to put on our indestructible Kefnet, although they are a bit tricky to deploy, since if we would play the main phase before attacking, we often drop down to 6 cards in hand, so sometimes we'll have to play them in our second main phase, or have to have some other card draw effect before we can deploy them, to start drawing extra cards with Kefnet while still attacking. Then we also have a few ways to protect Kefnet, with cards like Dive Down and You See Guard Approach to give it Hexproof. These are cards we can play in later turns, once we can activate Kefnet's ability to compensate for the non-card draw effects, and of course they're very valuable at protecting Kefnet if the opponent has some narrow answers that get past Indestructible. Then we also have Opt as another cheap cantrip, and both a Relic of Progenitus and Soul Guide Lantern as Graveyard Hate that can still be sacrificed to draw a card and Renegade map, which we can sacrifice to get a basic land. Then we also have Multiple Choice, which is more of a 5-drop. If we cast it for X equals 1, we get to scry 1 and draw a card. X equals 2, we bounce an opposing creature of their choice. X equals 3, we get to make a 4-4 token. But if X is 4 or more, we get to do all of the above. Then at 2 mana, we've got Blink of an Eye, as well as Into the Royal, which is essentially the same card, an instant that returns target to non-land permanent to its owner's hand, although we typically want to wait until we can cast them with Kicker, in which case we get to draw a card as well to keep our hand fully stocked. Then we also have Chart, of course, which lets us draw 2 and then discard a card, so perfect to play after we've attacked with Kefnet to get up a card. We've got Confounding Conundrum, which replaces itself and prevents the opponent from ramping too much. Thibblethip, a 1-1 that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. Omen lets us scry 2 and draw a card and can sacrifice it to scry 2 once again. Starlet Mantle, another hexproof effect to protect Kefnet, also gives it plus 1 plus 1. Eye of Vecna lets us draw a card at the cost of 2 life, and every turn we can pay 2 mana to draw a card if we want to at the cost of 2 life once again. Golden Egg replaces itself and can be sacrificed to gain 3 life. Maze Mind Tome lets us scry for free and lets us pay 2 mana to draw a card to go back up to 7, and after 4 uses we sacrifice it and gain 4 life. Mind Stone helps us ramp and can also be sacrificed to draw a card eventually. Sleeper Dart draws a card when it enters and can be sacrificed to keep a creature tapped down for a turn. Spare Supplies also draws a card when it enters, and 2 mana will draw a card once again. Tome of Legends also draws cards when our commander attacks or enters a battlefield if we pay 1 mana and tap it. And then moving up the curve at 3 mana, we've got Arrestor's Admonition, if we play it in our own turn, we can bounce an opposing creature and draw a card, so it gives us a nice bit of tempo if we can bounce something expensive. Cloudkin's here, a 2-1 flyer that draws a card. 
Crashing Tide, another similar effect to the Admonition. Its Sorcery Speed can cast it at instant speed if we control a Merfolk, which I don't think we do. Glacial Grasp, a 3 mana instant that taps a creature. Its controller mills 2 cards, that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And of course, draws a card. Seagate Oracle, a 1-3 that lets us take a look at the top 2 cards of our library. One of them goes to our hand, the other one to the bottom. Tome Raider is a bit worse than Cloudkin Seer, just a 1 1 flyer that draws a card when it enters. Trophy Mage, a 2 2 creature that lets us search our library for an artifact with mana value 3. So we've got a few different artifacts to choose from, as we'll take a look at in a second. Then we've got Uncomfortable Chill to shrink the opposing creatures down for a turn, giving them minus 2 minus 0, and to draw a card. Vizier of Tumbling Sands, we can cycle for 1 and a blue, in which case we get to draw a card and untap target permanent. So if we have enough cards in hand, we can even untap our Kefnet and still block with it during the opponent's turn, giving us a nice 5-5 five, five indestructible ambush. Then we've got Winged Words, which costs 2 mana if we control a flyer to draw 2 cards. It's a nice way to get up a card. Sea Dasher Octopus, similar to our Curious Obsession and Curiosity. The big advantage here is that it has Flash, so we can attack with Kefnet and before damage flash in the Sea Dasher Octopus with Mutate onto Kefnet, so our Kefnet will hit the opponent and draw a card right away, so it doesn't have that awkward restriction of having to play it before combat and going down to 6 cards in hand. And now we get to our artifacts that we can search up with Trophy Mage, including Clockwork Servant, a 2-3 that when we cast it for triple blue will draw a card when it enters, Hand of Vecna, an equipment that doesn't replace itself but is very synergistic in our deck, as it will give the equipped creature plus X plus X until end of turn when it attacks, where X is the number of cards in our hand, so it can potentially half our clock, and we can equip it by paying one life for each card in our hand, or by paying two mana. Paying the life is pretty risky in an aggressive matchup, but in some slower matchups we can afford to. And then Scattering Surveyor, a 1-2 that searches for basic land when it enters, and Sky Scanner, another 1-1 one, one flyer that draws a card. Then moving up the curve, we've got Gust of Wind, which we can often cast for just 2 mana if we control a creature with flying, returning target to non-land permanent we don't control to its owner's hand, and drawing a card. Inscription of Insight, a pretty flexible card that we can even cast with Kicker, letting us choose between returning up to two target creatures to their owner's hand, scry two and draw two, or making an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the number of cards in our hand, so that can also be a very large illusion. And then we've got Leave in the Dust, a four mana instant that returns a non land permanent to its owner's hand and draws a card. Spark Double lets us copy any of our creatures or planeswalkers and will remove the legendary status so we can potentially have two Kefnets in play at the same time. Turn into a Pumpkin is the same as Leaf in the Dust, except it also has Adamant, so if we cast it for at least triple blue we also get to make a food token, which we can sacrifice to gain three life. Master of Winds is a 1 4 Sphinx with flying, and when it enters, we get to draw two and then discard a card. And whenever we cast an instant, sorcery, or wizard spell, we can swap its power and toughness until end of turn. Then Karn Scion of Urza can give us card advantage with the plus one ability, and then the minus two can potentially make a construct with power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts we control. Then we've got Cavalier of Gales, a 5 5 flyer with a brainstorm stapled onto it when it enters a battlefield. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn and potentially attack with our Kefnet once again. Sir Eleonora, power equal to the number of cards in her hand, which is hopefully going to be 6 or 7, and when she enters a battlefield we get to draw a card, and cost 2 more mana to target Sir Eleonora with her removal spell. Then Jace and Raveler of Secrets can draw cards with the plus 1 ability, or can bounce opposing creatures with the minus 2. And then a Desert Doom, a 5-5 Legendary Dragon, that if it hits the opponent lets us draw a card, so it does take a little bit more setup to get it going alongside Kefnet, but great if we have any other card draw effects, and then once it starts connecting it will draw a card every turn. And then topping off our curve, Shark Typhoon, which we can cycle, making an XX Shark token while drawing a card. We've got Commence at the end game, cannot be countered, lets us draw two and then a mass X, where X is the number of cards in our hand, so we get to make a very large zombie army token. Karn's Temporal Sundering is a legendary sorcery, so we do need to control a legendary creature or planeswalker before we can cast it, but then we get to take an extra turn as well as returning up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then exile the Sundering. Mordenkainen, powerful planeswalker, that can plus two to draw two cards and then put one card back on the bottom, or minus two to create a blue dog illusion creature token with power and toughness equal to twice the number of cards in her hand, so that's going to be a massive dog token in this deck. 
We've got the discontinuity, which doesn't take an extra turn, but we can cast it in the opponent's upkeep to essentially make them skip their turn, so it's very similar to a time walk effect. And then Alrun's Epiphany for 7 mana lets us take an extra turn, as well as making two 1-1 one -one bird tokens. And then finally Seagate Restoration, which we can play as a land or a 7 mana sorcery, saying we draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hands plus 1, and we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game, so a lot of fun if we can pull that off. And then a mana base includes Hall of the Storm Giants, which can turn into a 7-7 creature. Then 32 Snow-Covered Islands to power up our Faceless Haven, which can turn into a 4-3 creature. We've got Blink Moth Nexus, can turn into a 1-1 Flyer. So plenty of creature lands, including Crawling Barons as well, which can pick up 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters every time we activate it. Then Fabled Passage gives us an extra shuffle effect for the various Brainstorm effects, like Cavalier of Gales and Brainstorm itself. Then Field of Ruin can deal with opposing problematic lands, as well as giving us a shuffle effect. We've got Reliquary Tower, gives us no maximum hand size, which can be useful if we're drawing additional cards and don't have to discard to hand size that way. And then the Biblioplex, which lets us activate it if we have 7 or 0 cards in hand, so hopefully that's going to be the case. And then we get to look at the top card of our library, if it's an instant or sorcery card we may reveal it and put it into our hand. If not, we can put it into our graveyard, so it gives us a bit of card selection. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alrighty, on the draw, facing off against Bladewing, The Risen, a Black Rats, Dragon, maybe a Reanimator deck. And our hand seems okay. Bit of creature interaction here, that could come in handy. Now, black is probably the color that has most main deck answers for Kefnet between sacrifice effects, exile effects. White is probably second, and then blue can potentially bounce our uh, indestructible creature, or maybe put an enchantment on it. No two mana play, sadly. As we see, Dragonkin Berserker, so definitely looks like a dragon tribal deck. On the bright side, since we were on the draw, we get to play Kefnets and we'll be able to block with it. Opponent passes, Starlet Mantle, a nice pickup. And we'll hit for five and then probably just play Tomb Raider. Doesn't seem like I need to keep a mantle just yet. And then we'll save the Crashing Tide for a slightly more expensive creature. It's going to be a Seize the Spoils discarding Sheevan Dragon. Nice classic. So it does look like they've got a bit of a reanimator angle, which makes sense with Bladewing. Don't have any counter spells to counter Bladewing, so this is going to resolve and get something out of the graveyard. And then for now, we can attack. Probably don't need to bounce Berserker, so instead I can Glacial Grasp one of the opponent's creatures in their turn. And then bounce another one in my turn, or play our Planeswalker out. They might suspect a counter spell and not go for it, which works for me. It's going to be Inferno of the Star Mounts instead, which is uncounterable. But we can still tap it down with Glacial Grasp. Which is exactly what we'll do here. Did mill the opponent for two as well, which kind of helps them with uh, Blade Wing. All right, so can attack, and then how do we feel about Mordekainen? Could minus, or we could plus. Let's see, right now they've got a 4-4 Hasty Dragon they can return. So 
I don't necessarily lose my Planeswalker if I plus and maybe keep back Tomb Raider. Yeah, that sounds fun. Or I could keep back Tomb Raider and minus. And just have a big threat in play. And then we can maybe clear a path with the Crashing Tide next turn. Oh, look, another task mage with a wand and a dream. Twelve twelve, not too bad. Run, if I will. So probably gonna see Bladewing this turn. But there's nothing that's too backbreaking. So seeing the value of having some chum blockers back to protect our planeswalker. I guess we have to watch out for Berserker boasting as well. But probably not this turn. So our opponent fetches up Volcanic Dragon. And we'll jump to save Mordekainen. Alrighty. So I can Crashing Tide. I can bounce the Dragon King Berserker, which would force a Chum Block from Bladewing. And then I guess we can tap a creature down with Seaguard Approach and just kill them here. Just gotta make sure to attack before casting it, so Kefnet's declared as an attacker. Or we could plus with Mordekainen, which also works. Alright, so that's one very large dog. And seeing the utility here over one mana instance. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Be able to hit our land drops. Maybe even get ahead on cards with Io Vecna up against a Halar Fire Fletcher Kicker deck. So yeah, finding some bounce spells would be useful against what's presumably a creature-based deck. So don't mind casting my opts. Hand of Vecna to go with her Io Vecna. Don't have the third piece, sadly. Um, yeah, Hand of Vecna could be okay. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to pay the life to equip it. But it does combo with Io Vecna that can also draw additional cards for us. So we can still stay at 7 or we can of course just activate Kefnet as well. If we don't want to pay the 2 life. Alright, the Ozolith for plus 1 counter synergies. And we're just gonna play Kefnet here. Turn into a pumpkin, the first of hopefully many bounce spells. So we'll take our draw step, attack, and then maybe play our land second main and do something else. Alright, opponent setting up with a branching evolution. So what do we want to do here? Could go for an end of turn, turn into a pumpkin to maybe bounce whatever they play next. It's the most mana efficient play we have available. Alright, opponent goes for their commander. Could also activate Kefnets, but I don't mind slowing down the opponent a little bit. And then, you know what, I don't actually hate paying the two life here. So let's attack. And then play Hand of Vecna. And then next turn I'll be able to equip Hand of Vecna and uh, still have seven cards in hand. We'll have to wait and see whether we want to pay the life or pay the two mana. 
But we do have a food token to offset the life loss a little bit. Opponent replace Halar. This time... I think I'll decline... Curious Obsession. So I won't be able to play the Curious Obsession until my second main phase, most likely. Unless I want an Inscription to draw to. But I kind of like... Adding a little bit of pressure here with the Hand of Vecna. And then I'm gonna decline to pay the life... Attack. And this is almost lethal. And then second main. Play a land, maybe go for... Surveyor. To guarantee finding a land. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll play the Renegade map. Small chance that we get punished if the Renegade map gets destroyed. Although we can always uh, activate Io Vecna to get back up to 7 or just activate Kefnet. And, yep, opponent's gonna need some flying blockers. Not too many ways for Red Green to deal with an indestructible creature otherwise. Cake to grow from the ashes. Deals a bunch of damage, pretty strong with uh, the branching evolution also, adding more counters to Halar. Halar attacks. Take it. Three mana left, second main, and our opponent explodes. Kefnet is gonna cross the finish line here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Muxus. This is going to be a tough matchup. An aggressive goblin deck can certainly outrace us and go wide enough to kill us, even if we have a 5-5 on defense. This hand is not bad. Spark double is a little bit more forgiving if we're on the draw compared to being on the play. But Chart, of course, can potentially make up for the extra card. So we'll see how this goes. Dodging one of the haste enabling goblins is going to be very important as well. Since those make a huge difference. Time warp, excellent too. Alright, so we've got a decent hand for the matchup. Signet, so yeah, they're just going to cast the Muxus next turn. And Relic Robber does get to connect since we don't have seven cards in hand. If we ever draw Karn, I guess the Construct will come in handy. Could also bounce the token with Crashing Tide, for instance, but... For now, we'll attack. And then... What do we do next? Crashing Tide only returns creatures, so I could bounce the Robber. That's reasonable, or I could shard, of course. So I can maybe set up Spark Double. If I just cast Spark Double now, I guess next turn I could sacrifice Spare Supplies to be able to use both Kefnets, or I could activate the ability as well. Maybe it is Spark Double, because I do want to have Spark Double in play before casting Time Warp, if possible. So we'll try this approach. If our opponent finds a Haste Creature with Muxus, we're in trouble. Alright, well, it's a haste creature, but not really the one I was thinking of. So we take two. Trophy mage is interesting too. So yeah, I can draw with spare supplies. Attack. For 11. So I just need to survive one more turn here. And how do we want to do that? Probably play Trophy Mage. And get some 3 mana artifacts. If I bounce Robber or Muxus, bouncing Muxus is pretty scary. 
I think I'd rather just have an extra blocker to chum Muxus if needed. And then find Clockwork Servant seems fine. Doesn't seem like it's the type of game where we're going to need Hand of Vecna. But yeah, next turn we would have been able to put it away with Time Warp as well, if we survive. Alright, Beetleback Chief. And an attack. I'll happily chump. Take three. And we get to attack. And we would have been able to attack once again with Time Warp. Could start interacting with Crashing Tide, play another three mana creature that replaces itself, so... Yeah, not a bad hand, showing the power of Spark Double. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Ugin, the Ineffable. Alright, uh, our hand's fine, I guess. Three lands, a few two mana card draw effects, a bit of interaction, and eventually a Planeswalker to top off our curve. Didn't think we'll be casting Seagate Restoration this matchup. Opponent does have one of the two mana ramp artifacts to start out, and a relic which we don't really care about. Alright, Fibblethip seems like the better two mana play. Field of Rune could also come in handy, maybe blow up a creature land at some point. Opponent cycles Relic, maybe looking for a land. And yeah, they didn't find it, just gonna be a Steel Overseer, which, uh, yeah, is manageable. So, attack, play Kefnet. And since we were on the draw, we can afford to play out a card that doesn't replace itself right away, maybe like a Mindstone. Alright, the Mirror, I do probably want to bounce so they don't get to make two mana with it next turn. So I can Crashing Tide. They can still make this a 2-2 two -two and block Fibblethip, so that's not attacking. So... Yeah, I guess we'll hit for five and then... I can go Mindstone into Crashing Tide, or Crashing Tide play Tapped Hall. That also works. I kind of like the Mindstone idea, since that can maybe allow us to ramp into our Planeswalker sooner. So we've got another bounce spell at the ready. Bonan just replaced their mirror. Time warp's excellent too. So let's smash. And take an extra turn. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're just too far behind, missing a land drop for a turn and then having their a ramp creature bounced. Can deal another 5 damage, maybe play out our Planeswalker next turn. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, up against a Dire Hunt fight deck. What do we think of our hand? Um, it's a bit land light. Do get a few cantrips here, basically. I do like Gust of Wind as interaction. Yeah, we'll try it. Kefnet being indestructible, of course pretty relevant in this matchup. I might actually want to hang on to Relic of Progenitus since next turn I'm probably better off playing Sleeper Dart or maybe even Shard of Course. Right, since we found a land, I'll go with the Sleeper Dart since we're guaranteed a third land for Kefnet. Otherwise, Shard of Course would have been able to dig a bit deeper to find our missing land. So if we draw land, I could consider 
casting the spark double on Kefnet second main since we have inscription to get back up to seven cards in hand before attacking. So yeah, land would be nice. If not, we'll probably attack, chart course, take it from there. Opponent ramping with cultivate for now. All right, there's a land. So yeah, let's attack. And double it up. That does lock us into having to play Inscription next turn to draw. But I think that's fine. So we've got some double Kefnet action. Represents a two-turn clock. And I'm not sure how red Green's supposed to deal with two indestructible creatures. It's not like they can make us discard cards to disable Kefnet. We can always activate to put us back to seven as well. All right, that's inscription. And then Brainstorm's fine. Servant is okay, although I'm probably better off going with Cavalier. I guess I just want to hit my land drops, really. Don't really need Brainstorm necessarily, since we already have a Brainstorm with Cavalier. Attack. And then... Probably okay to play Relic now. Right, let's see how the opponent gets out of this mess. So far they've only ramped. Beanstalk Giant doesn't block flyers. So our opponent seems pretty dead. Cycles Forgotten Cave. And yeah, just need to draw a card with Relic. And attack. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Kaikar Winds Fury deck. Yeah, Kaikar's ability to make 1-1 one, one spirit tokens with flying is pretty difficult to beat when our plan is to hit the opponent for five in the air, as they can just chum block us forever. So we probably need to find a hand that interacts with Kaikar. Some bounce spells would be nice. So as great as Time Warp is, I think we gotta take our free Mulligan. All right, this hand's better. We've got both Multiple Choice and Into the Royal to interact a little bit. So could already see Kaikar next turn. Burgi. So it looks like they're more of a storm deck. I guess they were missing the white mana for our Kaikar as well. Alright, so we have options. Start by attacking. I think for now I like playing Master of Winds and then next turn start playing our interactive spells so we can hit for four. And discard the land, that's fine. Keep Fable Passage in case we pick up a Brainstorm effect. Alright, there's the white mana, so now they can play Kaikar, but now we can bounce it with an Into the Royal, for instance. Still hit them for 9 damage. It's gonna be a Gift of Estates to find a few planes instead. 3 mana remaining. Just gonna be a Deliberate. Yeah, the advantage of playing a monocolor deck, of course, is our mana base is nice and smooth. So don't have any issues with not finding the right color or having a ton of tap lands. Harness Lightning without enough energy to take out Master, so just makes three energy. And adds red mana with Burgi. So I guess we're putting some sort of energy combo deck. 
Well, I wanted to save into the Royal for Kaikar. Good admonition as well now. Or we could multiple choice, although I wouldn't be able to do that pre-combots. Because then I'll drop below the threshold. So I guess for now admonition's fine. Bounce Bergy. Take action. And then we can keep up Starlet Mantle. And if we're forced to cast a mantle, we can always use Kefnut's ability to enable it again. Right, time Warp, just gonna kill the Master here essentially, that's fine. Kefnut gets to attack. And what do we want to do next? Multiple choice only bounces creatures with the second ability. So it's not incredibly impactful, just makes a 4-4, I guess. Yeah, we can just keep up a bunch of mana here. Epiphany would be nice too. And we'll just pass. Can cast a kick into the royal or protect with Starlit Mantle in case they can exile Kefnet somehow. And I don't think our opponent will be comboing off here. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, they just don't have the right answers to deal with Kefnet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, up against a Corvold Sacrifice deck. My hand's a little clunky with two 5-drops and no third land. I think I'll take my free Mulgan. This is better. Alright, probably want to save my Fabled Passage to go with Brainstorm. For now I could Conundrum, or I could Brainstorm and then Fetch and have my third land untapped. Probably don't need Conundrum in this matchup. Alright, so what don't we need? I guess artifacts are kind of nice with Karn. So I can shuffle away Conundrum. And then... I don't mind Blink as a bit of interaction. Jace is okay. Yeah, it's probably still one of the artifacts here. Let's go with the Golden Egg. And shuffle those away. Next turn, Kefnets. As we see Zorn to make extra treasure. So next turn I can cure Obsession before attacking. As we were on the draw this game. That's one of the perks. And we also were able to block with Kefnet. So no attacks from our opponents. Curse Obsession hit for 6. Draw card. And then we can still Sky Scanner. Or Trophy Mage, get Hand of Vecna. Don't hate that idea. Lines up a bit better against Zorn as well. If we want even more access to Hand of Vecna, we could also be playing the 4 mana, I believe, Quartermaster, which can search for a vehicle or equipment, and then we could play something like Beaumont Bazaar Barge as a vehicle that draws a card. So we could potentially consider that as well, because Hand of Vecna has been performing pretty well for us, as our opponent concedes, maybe failing to hit their fourth land drop. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against an Eluna Apex of Wishes deck. And our hand is missing a few lands. Do a Fibble Thip to Cantrip. I'll try it. 
on the play. This is maybe too risky. But we are playing a very healthy amount of lands, I believe 40 plus some of the dual face cards. Alright. No problems with hitting our land drops. Nothing from the opponent so far. Play Kefnets. Already drew Hand of Vecna, so don't need to find it with Trophy Mage. But still have a couple other options. Yeah, opponent's gonna start ramping with a Ranchester Alpha, so I guess they are some sort of dinosaur deck. Okay, can hit for six. And then... How about a Sky Scanner? If I play Hand of Vecna and play my lands, I guess I'll still be able to make use of the Hand of Vecna next turn. Yeah, I guess that's also fine. It speeds up our clock the most. Migration Path finds two more basic lands. So next turn we can equip by paying life even. And attack. And a sky scanner looks good. And I guess we can cycle relic. Alright, so opponent gets to untap with seven mana. No board. We'll see what they can come up with. Mythos to copy Kefnet, sure. Finds my Sky Scanner. But their Kefnet cannot block. And they're gonna mutate onto it. Yeah, still have a bounce spell even if they could block here. But the ability from Kefnet remains, so. We'll bounce that package. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So Hand of Vecna showed up quite often in our games today, and despite not replacing itself, it has proven to be a staple in the Kefnet deck, especially combined with Trophy Mage to find it for us. So yeah, overall, hope you enjoyed this mono blue brawl deck that doesn't have any counter spells whatsoever, so can't complain about that in the comments. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.